So we have the monthly month. I can't say monthly monthly report for July. So uh, let's check this one out. Uh, we always start out with AI, which looks different than it normally does. Uh, last month, the AI content dedicated time to bug fi fixing existing features. They identified the top 20 usables that the AI interact with and set out to fix as many issues as possible in two weeks. The issues were triaged and arranged into these categories. Let me guess. Selfies. Standing on chairs. Right? By the end, uh, so they said bugs that the AI designers could solve, bugs that AI animators can solve, and code issues not solvable by AI content. By the end, approximately 50 issues have been solved before the team returned to feature work. July's feature work included supporting weapons vendor setup by creating uh, weapon pickup and place animations, progressing through the locomotion polish mentioned last month, and retargeting overlay animations to female skeleton. AI designers continuing implementing dynamic conversations, eat and drink behavior. We're pleased with the result. Okay. AI engineers will now seek out colleagues at wall panels and work zones. Great. It's all squadron stuff, basically. AI features uh, for human combat. AI features included work on tactic selection, including implementing more data-driven approach to setting up the scoring factors in DataForge. Like we just we just watched the level cap video, right? If level cap read every monthly report, they would see all this work going into AI that are supposed to be dynamic and have these different feels and do these different things. We just don't see that stuff in Star Citizen because probably the servers. Um, they also began aligning existing perception systems, work started investing investigation behavior. So this is a big one where they'll find hiding spots, check them, keep tracks of which ones they've seen. All right. Uh, they're working to improve consistency of cover selection. They also blocked out animations for human AI mantling and vaulting to give NPCs more locom locomotion options when moving around the environment. AI tech, this is probably the more important one out of everything. Uh, traverse navigation islands using special actions. The basic idea is that using existing markup, we want NPCs to perform similar actions to the players in the environment. For example, we adjusted ledge objects, including specific uh, specifications that evaluate the nav mesh and link multiple islands correctly. Okay. R&D on usables. Progress was made on lo locomotion. Subsumption editor. Uh, progress was made on ship reinforcements. We already saw those. AI vehicles, July. AI vehicle team uh, used AI using different ship modes. So now they're fully integrated with the ability to swap modes. Uh, I would assume missile mode and quantum mode. I think that's what they talked to last time. Bug fixes were made throughout the month, including the issue to the fly to not computing. Okay. And dive attacks not ignoring driverless spaceships. Animation last month, the facial animation team developed further female vendors, outlaws, rescue transport, and continued burning down emotes. Motion capture team is currently building the new studio, which should be live by mid-August. Uh, that's obviously in, I think, the UK one. Character art worked on Frontier and high fashion outfits for upcoming releases. They also progressed with marketing items for both subscriber program and holiday events. Wow. Ship art. Argo SOV finishing exterior work before moving on to the interior. Development of an unannounced ship, which is currently moving into Graybox from Graybox to final art. So Graybox complete dashboard habitation cargo hold. So it's big and it's got a cargo hold. Team also progressed to the exterior hull, uh, progressed the exterior hull to final art. The final art passed on an unannounced ground vehicle was also finalized. So this is a different ground vehicle than I believe the Centurion that we've seen. The artist then moved on to pass the Misk Hull C. White Box, uh, I guess Misk Hull C just kind of got deprioritized because Cargo Refactor got pushed back. White Box Pass began on the unannounced variant of an existing ship. Unannounced variant of an existing ship. No way there's another Cutlass. No way there's another cut colored cutlass but probably which one what do you guys think what do you guys think what like what would we see what ships kind of work in this way no way it's an aurora they did some work on the mustang you have that mustang cargo spot A mining cutty? 
That would be cool. Cutlass Purple. You know, that color was the first thing that came to mind. Cutlass White Luxury NPC Transport. Luxury and Drake. I don't know. 600i. What would be a different variant of the 600i? Somebody said 400i earlier. I could see that. Right? The Connie platform um, from RSI has a couple of different variants. And I could definitely see the 400i kind of taking that on. Oh, that's right. The color's purple. Yep, that's why it sticks out to me. Yep. So, I don't know, man. That's kind of interesting. Uh, a resource management pass on the Aegis Hammerhead also began. So, if you guys remember, the, the nodes with the wires sticking to them, that all started with the Hammerhead. So, it sounds like this is being made in-game. It doesn't seem like it's a... Because this is being made by ship art. So, now you're taking those images from that little UI screen and actually putting it in game. That's kind of exciting. Um, in the US, Art transition their final past on the Drake Corsair. Uh, uh, that's kind of exciting. Uh, while supporting the system design on the gray box, system design on the gray box, taking the main retro and Mav thrusters to final stage. Okay. Uh, the port wings were also detailed. So just a lot on the, the Drake stuff. And we'll see when that comes. Battle of the Bricks. Awesome stuff from CIG and the Eve devs. So that's from Community. And then Engine. I always skip this stuff, guys. I'm not going to read any of this stuff. I always just look for things. Gen 12. Gen 12. Very cool. Um, volumetric clouds. Very nice. Rendering. Core Engine. <laughs> like, I, I don't read any of this stuff. It... Does my computer work better? Do, do I have better frames? Good job, engine team. I appreciate it. <laughs> That's it. That's how I look at it. Uh, features, Arena Commander. Uh, we've seen DJ, uh, DJ Bunting, I think is his name. He's been really active. He's on the Arena Commander feature team. He's, he's looking for feedback, working on things. He seems really motivated and cool. So uh, let, let's see what they got in the works and what they plan for in the near future. So last month, the Arena Commander feature team fixed issues in both AC and Star Marine, including uh, some with map and game mode selection, scoreboards, level geometry, respawning, AI spawning. Our community has been very helpful in, in identifying such issues as they appear, which we greatly appreciate, the Arena Commander feature team. Listen, you just got to play Star Marine for five minutes and it will be we we don't have to point out the the flaws there so i wonder what the spawning how that's worked uh specifically additionally ongoing improvements were made on how quickly and easily players get into sessions investigation into getting pu based locations as environments in ac and star marine also continued you know what that would be very cool please don't focus on maps please focus on the gameplay first and then deliver the gameplay the, okay focus on the gameplay and find the locations in game that make sense for that gameplay focus on what we do in star marine objectives how we want it to play then bring in the actual locations that would make sense for what your design is please 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 <laughs> finally bugs were fixed to give the community as stable an experience as possible all right uh, features, character and weapon. New actor movement synchronization was enabled for the PTU. July saw the team focusing on fixing issues, specifically with extra extrapolation. I don't, I, I can't say that word. When local machine tries to predict what another player will be doing. Um, and yeah, we've seen all the issues with it and hopefully it will continue to get better. They have to keep on this, um, because it's still very problematic. And they also started laying out the groundwork for FPS devices. Uh, we saw, we watched the level cap video earlier, and you know one of the things he wanted to see at Siege of Orson was a lot more variety in weapons that the AI uses used and us, and we're starting to see those. Uh, there are already some examples of these in games such as grenades and mining gadgets, but as the list of devices expands, the team wants to make more a more systematic approach to ensure the setup and flow are consistent across the board. Very good. Uh, gameplay features. Team focus. I love it, dude. Gameplay features. Look at everything. Paragraphs on paragraphs on paragraphs. Pictures. All these things. Gameplay. Two sentences. Extrapolation. There you go. Thank you, Summersoft. I can't... I'm bad at English. All right? 
The feature team continued to develop life support and engineering gameplay. This included work on the Miskol Aang as it's first at as it's the first ship with interactable relay points and control resource distribution. I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. The power plant and fuel tanks now power the system using the new tech, and the UI work was extended to allow players to control the temperature per room. Very neat. I don't think that's in the game now. That would be cool. I might pull out the whole A and just see. Hull scraping is progressing well, with the team focusing on creating the commodity boxes and repair ammunition at the dedicated filler station in the Reclaimer and Vulture. That's going to be really cool, man. This will be the... This is crafting. This is the first element of crafting ever in Star Citizen. You scrape a hole, you bring it into the Vulture, and you create commodities, or you, cr you create actual ammunition to repair things with. The first time we take something, and we turn it into something else useful. How useful that thing will be? Well... We're going to have to make repair, rearm, and all those things a little bit more expensive in order for it to be valuable for us to make these things. But good on them. I'm excited. That's awesome. Um, graphics, I, this, again, I just see Gen 12. Very cool. Um, yes, that's it. I don't, I don't worry about any of this stuff. Lighting, wow, lighting. Very nice. Game, very pretty. Narrative. Um, tackle range from lore on the mission front. The team generated text for the latest reclaimer missions. All right. This is the old stuff that we already have. Where are they moving? Um, met with the environment and design teams, talk over pyro shops, uh, over and overall economy to help differentiate the player experience from Stanton. Oh, the economy of star citizen. Wonderful. The, the lore team designing the economy of star citizen. Here we go, baby. That's what we want. We love that about this game. Maybe that's our problem. I love the lore guys, but maybe we should have the economy team or so, or an actual economy team designing the economy of Star Citizen and then the lore team supports them. Maybe that should be how it is. Uh, the two narrative designers recently joined the team who have been initially tasked to other teams to learn the setup and software. Very cool. Maybe we'll see them soon. Meetings were also held with the new in-game branding team in Montreal to review the various in-game corporations, manufacturers, standardize their looks, themes, colors. Very nice. Very nice. Um, they also published an, adi an edition of Shuman Employees. Okay, well, yeah, we saw that stuff. Tech animation. Um, years of development and quick fixes are being triaged, consolidated, blah, blah, blah. All right. All, all stuff that's not really related to gameplay. Online services. Performance improvement to Entity Graph, which will eventually be Persistence, I believe, right? So, uh, bug fixing and character reset testing were done for the new login flow. We need a new login flow. So, maybe that's why we have such a bad time with, with um, logging in, you know, uh, party joins and all these things. And they're kind of like, yeah, whatever. Uh, it'll be fixed soon. Um, the team also completed the new Chrono service, which offers... Uh, programmatic API for distributed timers and alarms, for example, on the expiry of rental entitlements, okay? Which, yes, if you ever notice if you rented a vehicle, they expire, but you keep them for a while. Uh, lastly, the team completed the first refactor of the new inventory management system, which is needed for persistent streaming. This is currently an internal testing with the actor feature team and affects almost all inventories in the game, though is invisible to the player. Uh, I guess this will always be invisible to the player, so not as important to us, but is important. When I see inventory management system, I'm like, oh, knickknacks, but good? Okay, nope. Yeah, no, we don't have that. Uh, Live Tools Montreal. So this is uh, Hex 3.0 network operation stuff. This is like all kind of behind the scenes stuff. Keep going, keep going, Montreal. Keep going, tech teams, online services. Great. Web platform, uh, cleanup for the skins. Pledge store, the team worked on creating cleaner, uh, clearer disclaimers around war bond uh, skews. So we saw that recently. People kind of freaked out about it, but it wasn't a big deal. The community team continued to work on new features of the community hub, which I thought we were going to see soon um, when they announced something that they were really excited about. That turned out to be Battle of the Bricks. So we'll see when the community hub comes out. Finally, turbulent backend infrastructure uh, team upgraded PHP. Okay. UI. Continued the new star map. This has been months and months coming. Can't wait to see that. Labeling concepting how to display space clouds in a way that looks great 
and performs well. Can we can we put performs well first in the sentence and looks great se second? Can we start telling the community that looks great is not the most important thing and performs well is? Because I think just little things like that just show what the company is all about is that looks great is more important than performs well because that seems to be the Star Citizen motto. Bugs were also fixed for the Siege of Orison update. All right. Uh, and then VFX... Uh, the team collaborated with the art and lighting teams for the modular sand cave locations with these modules being used by design to lay out cave interiors. Very nice. Very, very nice. And then pre-production on the quantum travel experience and general quantum travel visual overhaul. Quantum travel is changing. We saw something called quantum boost recently. We don't know what's going on with this stuff, but quantum travel is changing. I don't know what it is, when it will be, but quantum travel is changing. But that was the monthly report. Nothing too crazy there. Did I miss anything, guys? Let me know. But I kind of went through the whole thing. Nothing too crazy to see there. That was the monthly report.